Okay, hey guys, welcome to the day two of the jumping lamp tutorial. This is part three, which deals with the animation of our lamp. Now, I'd like to say that this isn't a tutorial on how to animate, as in it's not about timing or you know overlapping motion. This is about how to use Cinema 4D. So I'm assuming, like you know, this is for people who know what animation is. But I'll still cover a lot of basics, and you should be able to follow along. But I won't go into the detail of how to you know set timing up and stuff like that. So let's get to it. Okay, we have our lamp. Now, firstly, we're going to get rid of all the stuff in the object manager that we don't need for the animation. So we're going to go to Windows and Layer Browser or Shift F4. Always get to use shortcuts, a good idea. Now, obviously, we're not going to need the mesh, so we can hide that. Now, right now we have all these, we have joints and head joint goal, which we're not going to be animating. So we're going to make a new layer called Bones. And we're gonna throw the head joint and the joints in here. Now, but before I let go, uh, right now if I let go, only the joints, the top one, will become purple, see? But if I drag over and I hold the control key, and you see a little plus that appears in the box? Uh, if I click it like that and I let go, then everything below also becomes purple. So it becomes a, that's just a handy thing to remember. Okay, so we're getting rid of it. And now we, yeah, now I'm going to show you how, why it's in for this so great for generally a lot of things. I'm going to show you how to organize the interface, well, how I use it for animation. Now, firstly, attributes, we make this a floating box, so we go undock. Uh, we will now move this into the attribute box. I'm just having it off screen because right now it's not really needed. Uh, materials, we can close it all together, close manager. Uh, by the way, if you ever want to come back to your original setup, you go Window, Layout, and Standard, and it will be reverted. Okay, now we're going to undock this. Now we're going to open the timeline first, we're pressing Shift F3, or going to Window and Timeline. And we're going to dock it above the viewport. It's probably, I think this would be a good idea. Let's move this into here. So we have the tributes here and the coordinates here. I think this will be a good way to work for now. Okay, also in similar for the most uh, uh, windows, like for example this timeline, we can go and click this little button, we can open another timeline, and another timeline, oops, and another timeline, which in total we can open four. If you look again, I'll just go back to the original one. So if you ever want to work with multiple timelines, if you have one object in one timeline window, one object in the other, it's always possible. Same thing, by the way, goes for the object manager, so you can keep opening them and you can have different filters set up, so you have one object in the one object manager, and so on and so forth. Also works well if you dock the object manager to the timeline, so now then you have kind of separate little groups of, you know, here you're working with the lamp, here you're working with the octopus, or whatever else you might have. Okay, so, saying we have a set interface set up, I reckon it's pretty good. If it's not good, we can always change it, it's the beauty. Um, sometimes I undock this window, so I leave it floating, and then this would be up to the side or just down here. That's also an approach. Depends how detailed your curves are, how much you know stuff you have. Anyway, well, let's work like this since I'm in this interface right now. It's really personal, you know. You can set up however you like. I just, yeah, this is my personal one. Okay, so now we're going to. First of all, if you're an animator, you know that you first want to set. You want to animate in step mode. By default, Cinema 4D is set up to. Uh, interpolate as a spline. So if we set a couple of keyframes, I'll show you how to set keyframes in a second, this is just quickly. You'll see that it moves in a spline. See, it's not stepped, it's not even linear, it's spline based. So, I, oops, <laughs> that's all, see right now, see what happened? I click this and it moved. If you want to prevent that, you go back to your layer browser and you also put a little lock on your mesh thing and your bones things while you're at it. This way, I can't select it. The only thing I can select are the things that I can animate. So, yeah, just a note. Also, these axis bands that you see here. Um, uh, sorry, control tab. Oops, to see these axis tabs that I have here? Um, if you want to enable them, you press uh, Alt-V. And in the attribute center, you go to view and no, you go filter and you select axis bands here. See, appear, disappear. 
that's what selects them. And that way you can only move objects in two of the three axes. It helps with when animating in a two-dimensional field. Okay, so uh, let's get let's change interpolation type. That's what I was talking about initially. So interpolation type is changed from this little menu right here. It's custom interpolation. And then you have to go custom preferences and you select change spline to linear. I mean sorry, to step. And now if I put keyframes here and then I go to next frame and I put keyframe here and I put keyframe here. Now you will see it snaps to the position when the slider reaches the keyframe. Now, so how do we actually set keyframes? Well, keyframes are set in a rather simple way. It's the F9 key on your keyboard. So you just hit F9, and it will set a keyframe. You slide over, you move the object, you press F9, it will set another keyframe. But we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be using auto key. Auto key is this little button right here. Um, you can select what you want to key, the position, the scale, the rotation, the parameters. For this, we are only cur currently auto-keying the position, because we're going to be working with the head locator and the base. Now, we have auto-key enabled, but uh, just to, well, yeah, let's, let's work with it, let's put the keyframes in so we you know, have something to work with. We're going to be working in four positions, it's going to be obviously, it's going to be the Standard position, position one, it's going to be the squat, it's going to be the stretch before the jump, and then it's going to be the position when it's squatted, when it's in the air, flying through. So, let us put our first position. We will move the object slightly. We will move the other object slightly. And it should keyframe that position. Actually, probably have to, let's work in 15 frames, by the way. So let's move the lamp to a squat position. Then at frame 30, let's move it up to its extended position. And at frame 45, we will move the head slightly forward. And we will move the base up towards the head. Also, good idea to move this frame over to frame 30. By the change, moving frames, you just click and drag. If you want to move multiple frames, you could click and drag a selection and then move the whole selection. It's also possible. And then just click on empty play area to deselect. Okay, now that we've positioned it there, we will go to frame 60. We will move the base down. We will change the Y position to zero. We will move the head also down and we have the basic jump. Good? Okay. Now let's give it another jump at frame... Actually, it is quite straightforward. You just keep repeating the jumps. I'll just make it one jump for the time being because really, you know, it's all the same steps. No reason for uh, wasting tutorial time. Uh, we will now record... Uh, wait, sorry. Now uh, we will record the rotation of the head. Um, we select the inner circle or we can select it here and go rotator. We will set a keyframe at the landing position, so 60, so we go F9. Then at 70, we will rotate it over and press F9. Because right now, our auto key isn't recognizing rotation. We could turn rotation on, but I generally just have auto key for position and then uh, set rotation in manually because it's just the way I work. It makes life easier. Press F9 for a moving hold and at frame 90, it will be back to where it was. But what we'll do is we'll grab this keyframe here, see how we're dragging it? If while we're dragging it, we hold the control key and we let go. See, the frame is still on frame 60, but it is also on frame... I think I dragged something wrong, sorry, please excuse me. Um, we rotate, then at frame... No, at frame 60 we should be stationary. So F9 at 75. We will rotate up. F9 now. Hmm, interesting. Uh, please hold on one second. Okay, my bad. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Mental blank. Sorry, these keys, uh, they affect the F9 key as well. So if you're if you're pressing F9, you have to key the... So for this one, we will disable the position and enable the rotation. I don't know what came over to me. Anyway, so now we will press F9 
and then we will uh, go to frame 70 and we will rotate the head oops show z that we will rotate the head so it's looking at the camera we'll press f9 we'll go to 80 and choose a moving hold and then we will get this key and drag it across to 90 so now we have everything good so it lands it looks and it looks back and then continue to do this next jump okay good <laughs> um, now what we will do is we will let's introduce another jump actually that's just so because there's a couple of things I want to show you with splines that will continue. So we will add another, say, 30 frames or 45 frames. What you do is you just put your mouse into this field. You press plus 45 and you press enter. It automatically adds it. Then you stretch the preview range so it covers them all. Or you can just, you know, you can move it around as well to see what you're working with. And also you can see in the timeline. Well, I'll go over the timeline in a second. Now, uh, we will introduce another jump. So frame 100. We will go select back the head, lo head locator, we will move it down. Let's key frank, <laughs> turn on keying of uh, position and turn off rotation. We will move it down. Then we will go to frame 115. Wait, actually, hold on. We gotta introduce this moving hold here. Click, drag, hold the control key, let go of the mouse, and you have moving hold. Now, you will move, the head will sw switch down. And then at 115, it will stretch out. And then at 130, the base will come up. And the head will move slightly forward, so it's not just stuck in one location. So it's still moving through the air. And let's add another 15 frames to this. Just drag it across. And then the frame 145, it will be back on the ground. So I'm around here and change that to zero. And move the head locator across. Okay, good. So, see what we've got so far. So, stretch out this timeline. So, we've got the jump, we've got the landing, we've got the look, and we've got another jump. Obviously, timing is slightly off, but that's something for everyone to work on individually. It's a very big lesson, timing. It takes a lot of time and practice to learn. Okay, now that we've got the basics of this down, we will talk about adjusting timing, obviously, but, you know, the technical aspect of it. Okay, so for example, see how, let's start with it, let's do a little bit of adjusting right now. See how this looks like the head, first of all, let's just play to see how, okay, kind of the whole thing is moving way too slow. It's just, that's just not how fast the lamp jumps. So what we're going to do is we're going to the timeline editor. In the timeline editor, first, see how right now it's, it's in automatic mode. If you go to edit, it's automat no, view automatic mode, which means it shows you everything in your scene and all the keyframes. We don't want that. We only want the three things that we're animating in our timeline. And this is individual for each timeline. So if I open another timeline, I can, for example, remove all these, remove all objects, and I can just put just a locator, just a rotator. There you go. It will be, you know, individual. So you can have a rotation in this timeline on a different screen or any way you want. Okay, so we have all three objects in here. We have all the keyframes. Now, at the top, by the way, is the overall scene keyframe. So if I move this keyframe, I will move the keyframes in both, the, or all the keys under it, in the top row. Okay, so let's first make this timing a lot faster, because then it's too slow. So we just select, drag and select all of them, and then we clip these little orange things, and we squash it down. Now, if we press play, It goes a bit faster. Okay, good. Now, however, on this place here, for example, it's not important how fast it goes. Around. Let's say here, we want this hold to be longer, right? We want to look at you longer. So we find that this keyframe is the one where T turns his head back. We go here, we select it, and if we move it right now, it'll just you know it'll move it, but all the keys in front of it will be stay will stay there. So if it'll you know screw up the timing afterwards. We could, of course, just select this, and in this case it's easy, and then just click at the top and drag it all, or click on any of the frames and drag it, they will always drag. But sometimes when you have like a huge key f uh, timeline with like you know, thousands of frames, and you want to just adjust the slight movement here, and you want everything else to follow it, you can do the following. You go to Edit Mode, and you select Ripple Edit. And now, when you move this keyframe, say you move it here, everything will move forward. See, every, like, all the keys... Well, the ones that have keys. See, for example, in the base, there's no keyframe there. 
So what we do is we click this one and we drag it. So there is a keyframe. Oops. Turn off ripple mode first. That's also ripple. It's very important. If you copy keyframes, it stuffs it up. So first, drag by holding the control key and copy it. Then turn ripple mode on again by pressing Alt R. And now if you move it, see all the keys move with it. So it's very handy that way. Also, there is the region tool. Turn off ripple edit. Turn on the region tool. You can select it and you can move it and you can scale keyframes like that. Uh, it's more useful in the curve edit, but you can still use it here and it's just the R key for shortcut. Okay, so that copying keyframes I covered. Uh, selecting is also you hold it, you press the shift key. You can, you know, sorry, hold the control key to select multiple ones. And then when you drag it, you hold the control key and you copy those keyframes wherever you want. It is a very simple process. Um, you know, no issues whatsoever, just like dragging Windows shortcuts. Now, let's go in, I think this covers the important bits of the dope sheet. This is, by the way, called the dope sheet, for those who don't know. Let's go into the curve editor. Now, curve editor, also, uh, you know, a uh, great thing. In the curve editor, I'm going to show you how to change these interpolation once you have them in step mode. Now that you want to move, you select them all, you right click, and you change it to spline or linear, whatever you want. So let's change it to spline, see what happens. Okay, see right now the base kind of goes through the floor, which isn't good, and it seems to be kind of stuck in that position. In, it seems to float here where it really isn't meant to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, uh, we're going to select everything, we're pressing Control A, while having selected. Change this mode back to, let's change it to linear for the time being, just to make life easier. Go back to the dope sheet and see where our base flies off when it's not meant to. Yep, so here, this base is still meant to be from position 40, from keyframe 39. It should still be there till it stretches, till there, till, till frame 56. So let's get the base, and let's move it to frame 56. There you go, see? Oh yeah, we didn't, we seem to still be in step mode for some of these. So let's go spacebar. Let's select all of these, go control A and change it to linear. Now we jump up, we look, we jump. Okay, that's a this is just a horrible jump there. Yeah, that's just an atrocious jump. Anyway, we'll work on that later, but the important thing is that the position is right. Okay. So let's make all of these into a spline now. Now see how, if we make them fill in spline, it kind of dips below the ground, like here, see how it goes underground. Uh, if I add a floor plane, it'll be easier to see. See, it kind of, it floats underground. We can fix that quite easily, really. Uh, all we have to do is we have to select the base in our timeline. And see the green axis, is the green curve is the Y axis. So all we have to do is we have to change this to a linear interpolation. So we right click and go linear. Or you can click on this button and press T6, and it will be linear. Now, if we play it back, it slides back and forth a bit, but it doesn't go under the floor. To fix the sliding, we go to the X position, and once again, we select all these points, no, sorry, just these two points, and go T6, and now we have no sliding, see? Brilliant. Okay, uh, now after we have done that, but let's, I'll show you how to modify keyframes in the curve editor now. Uh, I showed you the region tool by hitting the R key. You can scale these keys down, you can scale them, you know, sideways, left, whatever you want. Uh, there's also these two, uh, always, in all the curves, they have these two lines at the top and bottom of each set of curves, which you can move, and they will move all the keys they will scale it from the highest to the lowest position, or from the lowest to the highest. Not particularly useful, but maybe for a quick edit here and there. It's not very accurate, that's the problem. You can't really choose. But any regardless. Uh, next, thing, how to copy and paste keys. You select it, you hold the control key, and you drag it over. It's that simple. It's the same way as how to make new keys. You just select it. If you want to make a key where the object is right now, you get there and you just press F9. Yeah, you have to select the object first, so if it's the base, you select it and you go F9 and it'll make a key there. 
Currently, see it's still making step keys, so you can go here and you go default interpolation, press F9, and there you go, you have a key not position for the base everywhere, which you can then do whatever you want with. Uh, what do we have to do now? We have, we've covered that, the auto key, the linear spline, uh, the region tool. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's the movement covered. Uh, it moves across, we've covered converting splines and yeah, multiple timelines. Yeah, it's really, there you go, you have a jumping lamp, you know. Obviously timing adjustments are needed, but that's, you know, that could take forever to explain and it's not worth recording for now. So yeah, I'll see you in the next part. I'll show you how to add materials and lighting to this. Cheers.